if you want to live in a creative way, be a better person in your family, do a better job of starting a new business, it, it's all the same. You know, I don't really know anything about music. It's more a way of looking at the world and wanting it to be the best it could possibly be and doing whatever it takes to be the best it could possibly be and being true to knowing that no one else knows. Everyone's idea is as valuable as mine. You know, we're all, we're all creators. We have to talk. We have to talk about this book again, I know. I already made a video about this, which you can find up here, where I tried to summarize Rick Rubin's great book. And I uh, mentioned in the title, it's actually more than a book. And in this video, I wanna stress on something that's already here in the title. It says, a way of being. So what does that mean? The creative act. So viewing yourself as a creator doesn't have anything to do with you being a musician, an artist, or anyone who actually produces art in general. This also means that you can be a businesswoman, you can be a dentist, but the way you view your work, the way you view life in general, that's what's so interesting. And I've been a fan of Rick Rubin's work for a couple of years now. But it wasn't until now that I realized that there are many parallels between his way of viewing the world compared to mine. What makes it great is the personal. Yeah. With all of its imperfections, with all of its quirkiness, that's what makes it great. The, you know, your, how you see the world that's different from how everyone else sees the world, that's why you're an artist. That's your purpose in sharing your work with the world. Even though we have completely different backgrounds, my main background, and I think what has shaped at least my last couple of years at the most, is my experience with parkour and free running. And I'm nowhere near a really good free running artist or parkour athlete, but I think I understood some of the main concepts in parkour, but I will get to that. And the parallels I'm seeing are quite obvious to me now because Rick Rubin also talks about a different way of viewing the world and maybe seeing it for something different. Let's take a really simple example. What shapes your perception? What defines how you perceive a given situation? In most of the situations that we encounter in our daily lives, our view of the situation will be shaped by what we're used to, what everybody agrees on, given norms, traditions, and things that humans in general agree on. And the first time that I myself realized that there's actually a layer beyond this was when I started with free running and parkour. Because what do you do? You go into environments that people normally use for specific things, like stairs or benches or walls and our traditions and everything we're used to shape the way we normally interact with those objects. Now what happens if you start with parkour and free running? You start to reinvent the usage of those objects. So a wall suddenly becomes an object of play. A bench where people normally sit on you will use for so many different things that you weren't aware before you could actually do. And through years and years of experience in parkour, I then took this view and this perspective and also applied it to other parts of my daily life, to my career, to the way that I view life in general. And well, soon after I quit my job and now I've been a freelancer for six years. And I think that's exactly what Rick Rubin means when he talks about the creative act as a way of being. Because it's about how you interact with the world, how you react to what's around you. Of course, we're used to certain interpretations and certain interactions. But the moment you start looking beyond those, you will realize there's actually more. There's more that you can do. There are different ways of interacting with certain objects and certain people. And even more, 
nobody really knows the truth. There isn't such a thing that we could agree on as the truth because it's always just perspectives. And what you can do about your life and your perspective is that you go out and find out how you can interact with the world in maybe a different way that no one has ever done before. And then you will be able to make a real difference. So how can you apply this to your life? At the core of this and the core of what I'm saying is no one knows what the world really is like. We agree on certain conventions. We agree on certain interpretations like stairs or a bench or a wall. But if you are able to use those elements in a different way, well, they become something entirely different. They will open a whole pathway for you to do things that have never been done before. And this is the core idea of what's in here. And this is the core of idea of what I've been trying to convey in the last couple of years with what I do. But I think the words in this book, they describe it in an even better and more precise way. The way you interact with the world and the objects around you shapes the way you think of it. If you change that, if you find new ways of interacting, of responding, of reacting, you will be able to change the perspective on the world entirely. And this is what this whole journey, what this whole quest is about. Because nobody knows, but everyone can find their own way to make it work for them. And wouldn't it be nice if along the way you would actually create something that hasn't been there before. So go ahead and create something truly amazing because I believe you can. Do you?